So a group of scientists with local ties have completed their decade long project looking into the behavior of space. It's a new mm -hmm. unprecedented results giving insights into the relationship between the mysterious space force called dark energy and the rapid expansion of the universe. So the group dark energy survey is led by the US Department of Energy. It's the Fermi lab located right here in Illinois and DES is made up of hundreds of scientists from around the world. Mm -hmm. And there are also a handful of local scientists that are part of the group. But right now we are joined by one of the lead scientists of the study, Dylan Brout, cos cosmologist and professor at Boston University. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Morning. Thank you for having me. Cosmologist, so that means you're like a star guy? <laughs> That's right. Stars mm -hmm. and really the universe as a whole. Yeah, stars, but like not, you didn't watch the Emmys last <laughs> night. No, I haven't. No, okay. I'm, I uh, probably should be more up to date. On no, those no, 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 no. This no. is really important we, stuff. We, we just got caught up this morning because we were we were in bed. <laughs> um, but uh, fascinating to have you with us. Uh, critically important, the, the Fermi Lab in Illinois, how important that is to, to some of these studies. And, and a, a decade uh, long study. You know, Audrina and I can, can maybe name the planets of our solar system. Um, but what the heck is dark energy and why is it important to us and this study? Right, great question. So perhaps you're familiar with the Big Bang, which is mm -hmm. synonymous with this idea of the universe expanding outwards. The whole universe is expanding. And that implies that it had a beginning, which we call the Big Bang. And only about 25 years ago was it discovered that not only is it expanding, but it's accelerating. It's getting faster and faster. Mm -hmm. And this actually won the Nobel Prize not too long ago. But this was really, really surprising. Uh, so as a cosmologist, what we're really trying to do is understand the universe as a whole. And that means understanding this really tug of war between the forces of gravity and the expansion itself. And there's actually a perfectly good analogy with uh, what we found for dark energy, which is if you throw a ball up, you would expect it to come down because of gravity. Mm -hmm. But what we actually found was that you throw the ball up and it's akin to the ball accelerating upwards. Oh, wow. There's some other energy force causing this acceleration. And dark energy is this all encompassing term that describes all of the possible theories for what it could be. It could be anti gravity, it could be some other kind of repulsive energy, it could be something else entirely. Uh, really, I would say this term encompasses perhaps our ignorance because it makes up the vast majority of the universe is what we find. Wow. So interesting. So uh, beyond my comprehension, mm -hmm. <laughs> but something, thank you for breaking it but down. Well though. explained. Yeah, well yeah. explained. Mm -hmm. Something mind blowing that our producer told us about this is that your findings are consistent with an equation Einstein wrote over a century ago. That's also mind blowing. Uh, can, we, can you just touch on that for a second? Sure thing, yeah. Um, so Einstein, over 100 years ago, came up with his equations for how matter and energy behave in space and time. These are famously called Einstein's field equations. And in his equations, he put an additional variable or an additional number, really, it's, it's quite elegant, actually. Um, and he put it in there for reasons that, that we may not fully understand today. Uh, he didn't know about dark energy. He didn't know about the accelerating universe. He had this feeling that the universe should be static and ever unchanging. And so he knew that gravity would cause the universe to change and he needed some repulsive energy to prevent the universe from collapsing on itself, essentially. And so he put this really beautiful number in his equations. But when he was confronted with the evidence that the universe is actually expanding, he realized he no longer needed that number in his equations. And famously, perhaps a rumor, perhaps truth, he called it his biggest blunder of his career to have included that number in his equations. Fascinating. But now we've discovered that actually the universe is accelerating uh -huh. and some energy that we find in our data is consistent with his original theory. Wow, 100 years later, not a blunder at all. Uh, we have one more question for you about Chile, but that's going to have to hold for another time. We'll talk about that at a date to be determined. Dylan Brout, cosmologist, assistant professor of Boston University. Looking forward to your future work. And we uh, like to have you back on. Yeah, and you kind can find a more. Science, ex a science explainer for us. I know. And if you want to see the DSDS findings, you can see that on our website. We're going to link all the information that we didn't get to. But thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me.